one of the things that begins to exchange in the presence of God, besides everything, is your desire. Everything that you desire to do to accomplish this, that, but everything goes, yeah. just goes away. See, when you reach that place, there's no more desire for anything except for more of him. And that's why we have to assemble. That's why we have to reconnect every time. Because we, we come to that place so that all of the desires and the things that we think we need to do, have to do, and so forth, they're melted away. And what, that gives God the opportunity to reset everything in divine order. Because, see, because our desires push us out of divine order. And, and that's why it's so important about worship. And it's not just, well, how can I say this without, it's not just worship. It's the songs we sing. When they're put in divine order by the Spirit of God, there's a change in us. Now, you know, radio stations don't know how to do that. <laughs> they just, you know, throw it out there. <laughs> and they push, most of the songs are outer court anyways. You know, they don't bring you into the holy of holies or the most holy place. Amen. But that is the importance of worship is going through to you reach the most holy place where there is an exchange made. And those exchanges are your desires. Now you may, uh, in other words, they've been removed from you. They may be standing away from you now. They're not in you anymore. Because the only desire is him. Amen? And this is where we want to stay. That's why we need to be renewed and refreshed all the time. Because one of the ploys of the enemy is called emotional manipulation. Emotional what? Manipulation. And, of course, we know that emotions are associated with desires. And, and even addiction is nothing but an a overwhelming desire, right? It's a loss. It's an overwhelming loss. That's what loss means. It means to lost over, to desire something, excretion, more than normal. <laughs> excruciating desires. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you what? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility every day. You know, that's a mighty request. To surrender your spirit, soul, body, will, desires, everything to him every day before you can get going. That's what, that's where your morning time, your routine is. When you're maintaining your routine, you are surrendering all these. You're exchanging what you think, what you, you know, what you need to do. Your, everything's being exchanged in your morning routine. What are you doing? You're disconnecting yourself from you and reconnecting to him. Because you can't reconnect without a first disconnect. Hallelujah. And then in verse 2 it says, and do not be conformed to this world. He's explained this, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, we must understand that your mind is a storage place of thoughts. It's a storage facility of thoughts. That's what your mind is. And it says, so you're to be renewing your mind. In other words, sometimes you need to clean out that storage unit. <laughs> Hello? Those things that we believe are so valuable, they're just collecting dust. <laughs> That's what hoarders do. <laughs> Think about it. So in this, your, if your mind is a storage unit for thoughts, it's also a storage unit for memory. Because thoughts are attached to memories. And he's saying, listen, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by getting rid of, cleaning out your storage unit. 
the mind, the thoughts, the memories. So the, in other words, there's an exchange being made that you may prove with us that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. <laughs> now we know that the mind is not only the storehouse of memory and thoughts and so forth, but it, it connects to emotional desires of the heart. They connect emotional desires in the, of the heart and the soul. In Proverbs 23 and verse 6 and 8, It says, do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies, for as he thinks in his heart. Hey, where? Ah. So he is. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. As we think, so we become. So the enemy knows these things. Amen? You know, we've, known, we've always talked about the battlefield of the mind. But to remember, the mind is nothing but a storage unit. It's what you put in it. So as you constantly exchange or nullify those areas, amen, even in memory, uh, memories are not um, erased. They're covered. Because corruptible memories are darkness. So when you bring light to it, it overshines the darkness, and the light supersedes the corruptible memories. Amen? So that's why the, even the Word tells us the more uh, light that's in you, the more you become like Christ. Does everybody get it? So we know that. Why? Because corruptible desires and corruptible memories or thoughts blind us. They put the scales back on. You know, we are created beings and everybody wants to feel good. Well, you'd have to be an idiot if you didn't want to feel good, right? And the enemy knows that ploy. In fact, he was the one that was most wanted to feel good because he wanted to exalt himself above God. That made him feel good. But his good desires of feeling good moved him out of position. Amen? And this is how the enemy manipulates people through emotional manipulation. He knows what you want to do to feel good about yourself. And then there's nothing wrong with certain things. But you better know whether it's from God and you can't allow it to go over a boundary line where you become prideful. And now the only thing you're doing is living to feel good. That's what addicts do. They live to feel good. The, prob the problem is, is they never reach it. Once you become addicted, you can never feel good. In fact, you feel miserable, and you just drowned it. Colossians 3, verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are where? Above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, set your, your mind, your storage unit, everything that's in that storage unit, right, on the things above, not on the things of the earth. That, well, so what is, what's the things above? God's word, God's presence, God's love, the things of God, God's promises. All those things are above. For you died and your life is what? Hidden with Christ in God. So you're setting your mind, your, the, the storage and everything in it now, on the things of above, not on the things of the earth. For you died, basically if you died to yourself, then your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also appear with him. So put to death your members. How about your memories? which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived with them. But now you, now you yourselves are to put off these anger, 
wrath, blasphemy, uh, a malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. And don't lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge. Now, where's knowledge put? In the mind, in the storage unit. Amen? According to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Setting our thoughts, or let me say thoughts of desire. Everyone say thoughts of desire. Setting our thoughts of desire on the things above. No matter what you're going through. Why? Because the things that are of above, from, in other words, it's God's word, the promises of God and living from the future. Now, again, this takes practice. Amen? And, 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 they, and, and, and if we could just slow things down when we're going through stuff, we wouldn't react. We'd wait till response. Amen? Everybody's going through. Look, at you live in a fallen world. It's a mess. That thing they so good everywhere. I mean, we're finding more and more. There's some individuals who will never turn. And there are individuals waiting to turn. Amen? Those are the ones, because the ones that are not going to they are not going to turn, you can't help. You just can't help no matter what you do. So all you can do is pray. But there are those who will turn. But turning means turning and cooperating because if you can't cooperate you can't change it's impossible in Hebrews 4 in verse 12 for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword now the word of God is the promises and so forth which is from above amen so he says, it's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of, of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner oh, of the what? Thoughts and intents of the heart. So the word of God, the promises, is a discerner of the thoughts of desire of the heart. Because the core, your heart is the, the core of all desire, isn't it? Amen. So the word of God is a discerner. It's the exposer of the thoughts and the desires of the heart. If not being refreshed and being renewed with God's words, we're not able to discern. We're not able to discern the deception of the enemy that emotionally manipulates. Everything is associated with emotional manipulation. Everything. No matter what it is. Why? Because we were created to desire. But we were created to desire God. <laughs> so the enemy knows that we, you and I were created to desire God's presence. Amen. That he puts emotional manipulation in which causes false desires. Unclean desires. He manipulates as much as he can. He uses people, and those who are not turned, who are not born again. Of course, anybody can be manipulated by desire. Amen? But there won't be the discernment of it. In other words, you're, there's going to be a, a manipulated emotional desires that's coming in for manipulation, but you'll be able to say, no, that's no, no, no. Other than that, you'll grab hold. And when you react to those things, there's an expression. There's even a fragrance that's released. We'll talk about that. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Emotional manipulation. That's how families are destroyed. Remember, the enemy comes to destroy families. Because if a family together is solid and they're united in spirit, 
It can't be destroyed. But the enemy causes emotional manipulation to cause one. Remember the Bible talks about a, uh, a sheep leaving the flock and the shepherd having to go chase the... See, because the enemy knows that a house divided can't stand, and we've shared with this already. So he, the only way he can really access you is through emotional manipulation. He causes you to agree. In verse 5, thus says the Lord, curses the man who trusts in him, in man, and makes flesh his strength. Hello. Whose heart departs from the Lord. So we'll look at when you are in the flesh, your heart's departing from the Lord. Well, I love the Lord. Well, you didn't love him right at that point in time. Amen. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert. Shall not see when good comes. In other words, it's going to miss opportunities. That shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. In other words, may even miss opportunities of rescue. Verse 7, blesses the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when the heat comes. Now, waters, by the waters. What's water represent? Spirit. Amen. So, when we worship, does the Spirit come? Do we get water? Look at what was shared. I saw it raining. Amen? I saw it raining in here. God talks about the early and latter rain. He says, out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. <laughs> See, so when individuals fall into pride or they become self-surviving, it's usually lack of spirit. Amen? It's lack of God's presence. Why? Because now there's manipulation, emotional manipulation for another desire. Because remember, you're always looking to be fulfilled in something. Every human being is looking to be fulfilled in something. Oh, hallelujah. He says here, for he shall be like a tree planted by the uh, waters when he spreads out his roots by the river and shall not fear. Well, if you're filled with the Spirit, you ain't going to fear. You won't become anxious. You won't worry. When heat comes, in other words, when trouble comes. But its leaves will be green and will not be what? Anxious in the year of drought, nor cease from yielding good fruit. You'll, your fruit will always be good. The heart is deceitful above all things. Here he goes exposing the heart. Why? Because the desires of the heart, the thoughts of the heart, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind. In other words, he's checking your storage unit. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Cursed or blessed. That means favored, unfavored. Amen? That means either losing favor or restoring favor, or gaining favor. Does everybody get it? If you're cursed, you're certainly not gaining God's favor, are you? But when you've been cursed, and you turn things around, now you're in the process of gaining God's favor. But it's not restored. It, nothing is restored instantly. Everything is earned. Amen? Deuteronomy 11. Verse 13. It shall be if you earnestly, earnestly, there must be an earnest desire. If you want, earnestly obey my commandments, which I command you today, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all of your heart and all of your soul. Then I will give you the rain. Here we go. There's that water again. For your land in its seasons in early rain and latter rain, hallelujah, that you may gather in your grain, your new wine, and your oil. I will send grass in your fields for your livestock, that you may eat and be filled. Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived. 
and you would turn aside to serve other gods and worship them. Lest the Lord's anger be aroused against you, and he shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, and the land yield no produce. And you perish quickly from the good land which the Lord has given you. Therefore you shall lay, lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul. Bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be a, a frontlets between your eyes. In other words, you should always keep them before you. You shall, te you shall teach them to your children, speaking to them, who sit in your house when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them, like the days of heaven above the earth. If you carefully keep all these commandments which I command you to do, to love the Lord your God and to walk in all of his ways and to hold fast to him, then the Lord will drive out all these nations from before you and you will, depo will depossess greater and mightier nations than yourself. Wow. So God will drive out your enemy, won't he? Amen. He said the heart is deceived it's most deceitful. Why? It's the core of all desire, or emo, you know, emotional desires, thoughts and desires. It is the core of everything. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. Emo emotional manipulation is a constant thing that we battle every single day. It is the ploy, one of the greatest ploys of the enemy. Remember, his greatest weapon is deception, and his power is fear. It's fear and emotion. Yeah. And verse 14. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. No, verse 11. Oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections, which are desires, aren't they? Amen. And every desire has a an emotion. Now in return for the same, I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. Why? Because there will be an ma emotional manipulation. People open themselves up to those things. <laughs> yeah. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion is light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? And what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I'll be their God, and they shall be my people. If they do what? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is what? Unclean. Now, is there unclean desires? Yeah. Is there unclean emotions? Yes. Is there unclean thoughts? Yes. He says, and if you don't touch those things or agree with them, then because that's how you touch them, you agree with them. Amen. Then I'll receive you. I'll be a father to you, and you'll be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Unclean desires by emotional manipulation. That's what the enemy loves to do. Revelation 16 and verse 12. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and it was dried up. I don't know if you know right now, but the Euphrates River is draw, drying up fast, quickly. Some places you can cross over already. It's incredible. They're showing it quickly drying up. This is, this is prophetic release, isn't it? It's happening. The Euphrates River is drying up. And it's just a matter of a few years where it's dried up completely. And its waters was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. In other words, that they might cross over. 
And I saw three what? Unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of a false prophet. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the bail of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and see his shame. And they gather them together to the place called, in Hebrew, Armageddon. Okay, these unclean spirits cause emotional manipulation. They are preparing for the final conflict between evil and righteousness. Again, the river is drying up day by day, fast. These spirits are enticing humanity in a tremendous way, like never before. The Euphrates is not dried up, but it's drying up. In some places, you can cross over already. These spirits have already been released. And they're emotionally manipulating humanity in such a great way. That's how, you know, I think about this. Um, transgenders. Uh, the, what are, the, uh, the, look at that. That's emotional manipulation, desire. Come on, I mean, anybody that has any kind of common sense knows that it's unfair for a dude to dress up a, like a girl and go play girl sports. I mean, how stupid can you be? I mean, think about this. They want to feel so good about themselves that they're going to dress up as another opposite and go play that sport so they can be victorious? That's plumb dumb. That's called emotional manipulation. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. When he has been approved, he will receive, when he has been what? So we're tested on how much we overcome. Does everybody get it? You're tested on what you overcome. For when he's been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. He says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. He may allow testing to come, but he doesn't tempt people. This is important. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. Wow. When, and it says... We are drawn away by unclean desires and enticed, in other words, to agree. When there's an agreement, there's a release. There's a release of foul, unclean foulness. It's a scent. Now, this may sound strange, but it's a scent that draws other spirits. Is everybody, are you with me? It's the scent that what? Draws other spirits. Ooh. Hmm. When a person agrees, in other words, we're drawn away by these desires because they're unclean desires, and when they, and if you're enticed and you agree with it, a releasing of a foul, unclean scent that invites other spirits to partake of the emotional manipulation. And what happens is they multiply until an individual is awakened or dead. Now think about this. Um trying to keep this in a clean way. <laughs> animals. Animals. 
man, they smell everything. Amen? I mean, they, they smell everything. They, they have a scent that they know. They can scent danger. Why? Because they scent that foul uncleanness. If you got, a, you got a dog or whatever, man, they'll sense it. They'll, they'll stop and they'll bark and they'll sense that. Amen? And they'll sense a person that's releasing that foul uncleanness, uh, uh, that scent. They'll, they'll be like, yo, this person's dangerous. This is when a spirit leaves a person, when the house is clean, put in order, then actually it gets corrupted again. Amen? Then seven more come back worse. Why? Because they know, they know the scent. When a person agrees with that desire that's unclean, there's a scent that's released. Heck, you know it. Sometimes you sense, you sense it, but we trans, we trans, translate it into, that doesn't feel right. Amen? That's that scent. That doesn't feel right. Not that we're relying on feelings, but sometimes that's the only way we can express it. You can't go around. I mean, there's sometimes I've smelled it. Do you ever smell, you know, the same thing with people who are huffers, smoking cigarettes and stuff? Man, they walk by and you smell it. And, 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 but it didn't bother you when you did it until you finally got clean from it. Then it was like, oh, my God, how disgusting that is. Why? Because it's a spirit also in that person. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 18. For when they speak, these spirits speak great swelling words of emptiness. They allure through the loss of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. These are what? Emotional manipulators. While they promise them liberty or freedom, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into what? Bondage. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog, which is a demonized individual, returns to his own vomit, and a soul having washed to her wallowing in the mire. But thank God for forgiveness in the washing of the blood. Amen. They bring individuals back into bondage through emotional manipulation. See, every one of us knows what a clean desire is and an unclean desire. We all know. Why? Because you have the Spirit of God. But when you choose to ignore the counsel of the Spirit, he'll step back. Go for it. When you eat enough dirt, I'll be here. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 6. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which was in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power to overcome love of God and the mind of Christ, a sound mind. Amen? So they bring individuals back into bondage, fear, unworthiness, self-centeredness, pride, and so forth. People lose the power to overcome. Their breach of love from God is diminished. And their sound mind has drifted. They've lost the promises of God and who they are. And one of the things that, what's the first thing the enemy comes to steal? Your identity. Yeah, your identity. Every one of us knows people who are no longer who they used to say they, they were. There's somebody that everyone here knows somewhere that was a believer. They knew their identity, and it's been compromised now. And are playing the worldly game. 
called rural, uh, rural Roulette. Instead of the walking in righteousness. Amen? 2 Corinthians 3, verse 12. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were what? Blinded. In other words, the storehouse was locked. <laughs> Think good things couldn't go in. Amen. In other words, so they, they couldn't, not only could they, they couldn't see to receive something good because it was shut down. You and I, when we were in the world, it was shut down and locked. We couldn't receive the righteous things. They didn't make sense to us because it doesn't make sense to a person that's not born of the Spirit. Amen? And, and so, but... And he says, and even then, and you know, these were God's chosen people too, weren't they? Amen? Unlike Moses, when he put a veil over his head, over his face, so that the children of Israel could not look, because it was passing, that good was, but their minds were blinded, for even until this day, that same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil was taken away in Christ. They refused to accept the Messiah. The price, that's basically the bottom line. They refuse to accept that it's been fulfilled and the price paid so they can't receive it. They really have to be turned. The Word of God has got to be kind of like boom, boom, boom on them. You know, no man comes to the Father unless he's what? Drawn. But even when God draws that individual, that individual has a choice to accept or refuse. Look at how many times you and I were draw. Look at how many times you and I had the opportunity. I'm just not ready yet. And then we went through all kinds of crap. Amen. <laughs> Verse 15. But even to this day, when Moses is read, the veil lies on their heart. When Moses is read, nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. In other words, when they're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom, liberty. Freedom. So a person is freed because the Spirit of the Lord has control. Bottom line. We've allowed control. See, so the enemy will try to emotionally manipulate us to restore the blinders again and bring us into bondage. And it causes an individual to reject the counsel of the Spirit. Amen? And if you're rejecting the counsel of the Spirit, you will not walk in freedom. You'll walk in bondage. And believe me, it doesn't start overnight. It's a process. He hits, 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 little, 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 a little love and love and all love. Next thing you're in a place, you're like, oh, my God, how did I get here? And the world is in that condition right now. How the heck did this world get here in this condition? And I'm going to close in Ephesians 5, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Hello. And walk in love. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for what? Sweet smelling aroma, not a foul, unclean scent. But fornication and uncleanness or covetousness, not even let it, don't even let it be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting for, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, no unclean person, nor a covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them or be emotionally manipulated. 
Amen? Be careful because it's not stopped yet. But thank God for the blood. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for the guidance of the Holy Spirit that brings us to truth. But again, I want to go back to the area of worship. See, that brings a refreshing and a renewing, doesn't it? It begins to melt away all of those desires. Sometimes you didn't even know there was unclean desires there until you got into God's presence. Amen? And that's how people falter. That's how they drift. But he says, if you love me with all of your heart, seek me with all of your heart, and obey me with all of your heart, you will find favor. Amen? You will find freedom. <laughs> and especially freedom from ourselves. Praise God. <laughs> Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you for your word. And Lord, we ask that you expose any emotional manipulation that has been, that we've agreed with, or, or any of the seeds that's been imparted in us in any way whatsoever. That we may dismantle them from us and all their associated spirits and repent for even agreeing with them. So, Father, cleanse us with the blood, fill us with your spirit, and reunite us with you in the fullness of your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.